What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host BJ Dell and today is video five in my new series of videos where I use the iPad and Procreate and do drawing tutorials showing you how to turn the entire alphabet into animals that begin with whatever letter that we're on for that video. Today is E for eel. I'm gonna show you how to draw that cute little cartoon eel. Shout out to Katie Opener 5234 for the eel suggestion, which brings me to the point. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys wanna see going forward. If you have an animal suggestion for any of the upcoming letters, F through Z, definitely leave a comment below and you might see your idea come to life in one of the upcoming videos. But today it's all about the eel, so let's go ahead and jump into it. All right guys, let's go ahead and draw E for eel. Starting out, I'm using a 4,000 pixel by 4,000 pixel, 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas. For my brushes today, I'm gonna be using my Essential Creator set for Procreate. I'm gonna start out sketching with the Brainstorm sketch brush. Switch over to the smooth inker for inking and then the soft rendering brush to add shadows and highlights. And then also for the color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made. So if you wanna download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's video, you can get that for free on my website. If you go to bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page, you can find that. There's also a link down below. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin with, I'm gonna throw the E in, just so we kinda of have a reference to go off of. So we're gonna come up here to the wrench icon. I'm gonna go over to add. Gonna add text, bring up the keyboard, and just do an E here. Double tap here, and we'll tap the font here, and I'm gonna change this to Arial. And we're gonna select bold. With that done then, I'm gonna grab my arrow here just to resize this with uniform selected. And we'll make this bigger here. I'm making sure we got that orange line in the middle so we can tell that it's centered there. All right. Hit the layers to lock it in. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I think I'm going to shrink that down just a little bit more. So we've got some room to play around with. All right. So I'm gonna come up here to layers and I'm gonna hit N for blend mode first. And I'm gonna drop the opacity of this down. Like I said, we just want this as a reference or as a guide to help us with our sketch. So I'm gonna drop that down to about 16%. We wanna see it, just don't want it to be too dark. And with that done then, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hold down on layer one and I'm gonna drag this above the E. So this is gonna be our sketch layer up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that so we're on that layer. And then we're ready to start sketching. So I'm gonna start sketching with the black here, that first color. Once again, using that brainstorm sketch brush. And I'm just gonna kind of start to form this eel around the E that we've got here. So we'll bring, this is gonna be his head up here. So we'll start to bring around the shape here. Gonna have his top part of his mouth here coming up and around and then the bottom lip here. Coming back in and forming that chin here. We'll start to bring the body around. Honestly, E for eel, this eel, I, <laughs> I kind of feel like it's almost cheating because it's actually pretty easy. The, uh, the last one I did, D for duck, was a little bit harder to kind of cram everything in and with the way the eel can twist and turn this is a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna kind of follow this around. So this is gonna be his tail down here. Just gonna kind of bring this back up. We'll bring the top of the body in here. And it's gonna kind of curve in on itself. So we're gonna have some folds and some creases here. We'll bring this one back down and around. I'm just getting the basic shape right now. I'm gonna kind of fine tune it here as we go. All right, now that we've got that, I'm gonna to start to kind of work in some creases here so this looks a little bit more believable. So just pressing down a little bit harder then. Just kind of get a little bit more definition out of these lines. And as this part of the body comes back up, 
So you'll for, fold some skin in here so we've got some creases there. As the body comes down here, we'll have some extra creases in there. And as always with this section, I just keep it really sketchy, really loose. I'm not worried about fine tuning all these lines. It's just to get the basic shape out. So I really would recommend not worrying too much during this process of making sure that all your lines are perfect and everything, you know, looks print ready or Instagram ready. This is really just to, to brainstorm and get the ideas out. All right, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and kind of start to get the fins in here. So we'll bring fin up here in the back and kind of bring this down. It's going to follow that basic shape. Have it kind of cut back in on itself here. And then same thing here, coming back out, down and around. Just adding some twists and turns and some cut-ins like that, just so it's not perfect and makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. And then we'll have some lines coming through here as well. Once again, with these, it's just more so putting them in there just so I know that I'm going to have something there. Get the fin around the tail here. Have that curve up and around. And once again, some more lines in here. And just like that. And then, let's see, probably a fin here on the head part. More lines. And then the eyes. So I'm just going to do an oval first just to kind of get this where I want it to be. I think I'm going to bring, holding down on the eraser here, we'll switch to that same brush that I'm using. I'm going to bring this mouth down just a little bit different so I've got more room for the eye here. Get the oval in there and then I'm gonna kind of bring a curve around here so it's not a perfect kind of circle shape up there at the top. Get an eyebrow in here because I love throwing in eyebrows for cartoon characters, even animals. And we'll get a oval here for the iris and then another one in the center for the pupil there. I'm gonna grab the lasso here with freehand selected. I'm just going to move this a little bit. I'm grabbing the arrow to move it back. Come on. All right, I think that looks a little bit better there. Have it set a little bit closer to the rear there. All right, I'm bringing this mouth out around again here. A little crease there in the back for the smile. And maybe like a little bag here under the eye. All right, overall, I think that looks pretty good for the sketch. Like I said, really loose, really brainstormy. So there we go. So now we've got our sketch done. We're ready to move on to the inking stage. That's where we really clean up everything. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna come up here to my layers menu. We can go ahead and turn off the E now. We're gonna do the same thing here by hitting N for blend mode. We're gonna drop the opacity just like we did for the E. I've got it down to, in the 20s is good. I got 26 on this one. And then we'll make a new layer on top. So this is gonna be our inks layer. With that selected then, we're gonna keep that same color. And I'm gonna go back up to my brush library. I'm gonna switch over to smooth anchor. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this and we'll bring up the stabilization here. I'm gonna pull up the streamline on this. We'll just max that out. Just cause I've got a lot of curve lines here and I really want a really nice smooth line for those. So I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see a little bit better and have a little bit more control over the stroke. And I think beginning, I'm gonna go ahead and start here with the mouth. We'll bring this up and around and down here to the body. I'm gonna start with a lighter press here. Since it's kind of inside, I want the heavier, say for the outside here. 
So we'll bring that down and around. And you might take a couple attempts just to make sure that your lines match up sort of close with the uh, sketch lines here. One thing here you can also do like this, I, I like this line here, it comes out a little bit too far up here. So what I can do in this case, if you are using Procreate, we can use that transform tool. I'm sorry, the transform tool here and then hitting warp, we can kind of bring this line down, have a little bit more manual control over how that looks just to get to line up a little bit better. Back to my brush, I'm gonna hold down on the eraser again, so I switch to that same brush, and I'm just gonna erase, it didn't exactly switch over, I'm gonna erase the taper on the end here, it comes out a little bit too far, so I'll just pull that back a tad bit, and then back to my brush again. All right, coming in tighter here so we can see a little bit better. We'll bring this line around and up. It's a little bit too dark there. There we go. Race a little bit there, so we've got a little bit nicer of a taper. Bring the curve here around for that little smirk. Our eye here. We'll see, I want a little bit heavier on that outside top part and lighter on the inside. on as we go here and this is where we've got an overlap here for the eyebrow I like to make a new layer and then on this new layer I can go ahead and get this eyebrow in here and you see they've got that overlap there I'm gonna clean up this little part here on the eyebrow but now I can go back in to my layers menu and if I select layer 3 which was this part I can then erase this overlap and I don't have to worry about erasing part of those lines that we already did. Once I'm done with that, then I can just pinch those back together and now all the lines are back on the same layer. All right, back to my brush here. Do the oval here for Iris. Holding down then to lock it into a perfect circle. Same thing here, the pupil. Holding down and then touching the screen with our other finger to lock it into a perfect circle there. I'm going to hold down here on the background to select white and we'll just go ahead and knock in just some highlights here. Actually, we'll have the light source probably coming in from this way, so I'm going to have the highlights there on that right hand side. All right, back to black then, holding down to select. We can just kind of continue the process here. This overlap here, I like to kind of have control over the stroke as I go into it. So I'm going to make another new layer here and do that same erase trick. So I'm going to start with a light press for that taper and then get heavier as we come around. And this way, so I don't have to stop my stroke, I've got a nice solid line there that I can erase. And we're back to the same here. Oops. Erase that there. Now, I'm going to hop down to layer three, which was this layer, because I'm going to do an overlap here again, and this saves me from having to make another new layer. So I can lock in this line, and then I can erase this overlap here. I can do the same process. I can go back to this one, since those aren't touching. I can select that layer and do this overlap, and then erase. And then this is gonna be a little bit of a longer line here, so I'm probably gonna come over both of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and pinch those together so everything's all in one now, and I'll make another new layer here. Going back to my brush then, now I can do this line here and bring that in. I'm gonna do it one more time here. Went a little bit too far down. I think it's still a little too far there. All right, there we go. Now, once again, back to the eraser, I can erase that overlap. Do 
this line here. And once again, I'm on a different layer here so I can erase the overlap there. Kind of moving down as we go. Back to that layer three. Do the line and then erase the overlap. And then this one's gonna be another big one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pinch those together. I'm gonna to make another new layer now. And with that brush, I can, once again, really have control over this stroke. And erase those overlaps without having to worry about hitting those parts that I already did. So I'll pull back out now and you can kind of see we've got the body completely done. I'm going to go ahead and pinch those together now so all of our lines are back on the same layer. I'm going to make another new layer here for the back fin. We'll bring this around. Kind of tapered line there. Erase the overlap. We'll pinch those together and make another new layer now so I can do the overlap here. And back to the eraser. You see, it's just kind of a, a repeat process of just adding a layer, combining the layers, so on and so forth, but it just makes it a lot easier than having to worry about trying to get your eraser to stop in the right spot and not hit the line that you've done before. Get the tail here, and once again, we can erase those overlaps. I think before we do any of the inside lines, I'm gonna finish up here with the fin here at the top. I think that looks pretty good. All right, and then I'm gonna pinch those together. And now we'll make one new layer, and this will be for these thin lines here along the back. And with this, I'm just using a light press. I'm not going as hard with my pressure, just so that way that these lines with them being on the inside, they have a lot less of a line weight. Just continue this process around. And then going back to the eraser now, we can clean all of this up and you see just how fast this goes then if we were trying to stop our lines every single time we probably would have come outside a little bit or we would have gone the inside here and this just makes the process a lot less tedious it can be a little looser with it too that's one thing i really urge you to do when you are inking is keep a really loose organic feel. If you're trying to trace too much of the sketch and make sure everything lines up, it's gonna look really mechanical. Uh, it's the same thing if we were doing these lines and we were trying to stay inside this part, not hitting outside here, not hitting outside here. You really get that mechanical feel to it. Everything feels just a little non-natural so or unnatural. So doing it this way really lets you kind of flow with that, the line and just the, the overall effect that you get with these. Also make your line smoother too. So let's just erase this one. If I was, you know, trying to exactly get this in here, you can see number one, you might get too big of a line and number two, it just looks a little mechanical. So this just makes it flow a lot nicer. All right, erase that, pulling back out then. I'm gonna combine those. We're gonna turn off the sketch layer and see what we're left with. So there we go. There is our kind of finished inked design. Here I'm gonna go ahead and add in some details now that we didn't do in the sketch. So going back to the, the brush here, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw in kind of like some 
scales here coming down and around just really haphazard just wherever you kind of think that they go or we can also do some cross hatching i always like to do that too just throw in some cross hatching around like this hit some more scales down here in the back Not too crazy, just because you know eels are pretty sleek and smooth, but just to give that feel to it. All right, and then finally, I think to kind of create the, the final effect on the eel, I'm just gonna have some drips coming off of here. So it looks like he's wet or he's got some water coming off of him. draw some tapered lines there showing the kind of motion of that and we'll do some more down here too you'll see I'm not even sketching this out just really loose and fluid with the the curves and the lines there and some tapered lines like that just showing the drip so that's going to be kind of clear there that's what those are basically holes in that drip and then maybe one more down here all right then pulling back you can kind of see what we're left with so there we go we've got our inks done now it's time to move on to adding our color flats so to begin our color flats we're going to come up here to our layers menu First thing I'm gonna do is our lines layer. I'm gonna tap that, I'm gonna set this as reference. So this is gonna allow us to drag and drop our colors. Using that kind of as a guide uh, where they go. Coming underneath then, layer three, we're gonna make a few layers here. So we'll make this one here. And we'll go to our color palette and choose this second color on the top row. We'll drag and drop that in for the body. You'll see I have to manually kind of color in those cross hatches there. And then from here, I'm gonna make another new layer. So the color flats I'm gonna make on a bunch of different layers is gonna help us uh, when we add the shadows and highlights. It's just gonna make it easier having them on different layers, kind of like we just did with the lines here. We don't have to worry about touching other areas we've already done. So I've got this color here, the third one in. We'll drag and drop that for this. And then I'm gonna hit continue filling up here at the top so I can just tap inside all of these and I don't have to drag and drop every time oops need to make sure you don't hit the lines because you don't want the outlines colored all right and I think we'll hit this one too all right back up to our layers menu so we've got two color flat layers right now we'll make another one here and with this one we've got the yellow we'll use that for the eye and then I'm going to make another one on top of that one and we'll use the orange for the iris there let's go ahead the fins layer here let's go back to that one layer five and we'll do the eyebrow in that third color here drag and drop that one in and then another new layer. Doesn't really matter where these color flat layers go in relationship to each other. You can have them in any order you want because they're not coming on top of each other. They're not blocking each other. So we've got this blue here. We'll use that for the drips. So continue filling here. And we'll tap those. So those are filled in and we have our entire Color flats done really quick, super fast. It's the easiest part of the entire process. So now that we're done with the color flats, let's go ahead then and we're gonna move on to actually starting the shadows and the highlights. So to begin this, we're gonna come up here to our layers menu again. I'm gonna do the body first here. So we'll go to layer four. I'm gonna make a new layer on top of this one and then we're gonna tap this and then we're gonna select clipping mask. So what this does is it allows us to color in on this layer and it's only gonna show up on the part that's colored in on this body. So if we color in out here, it's not gonna do anything. We color in on the eyes, not gonna do anything. It's only gonna show up on this layer. So with that done then, we're gonna come back up here to our color palette 
And we'll move down to the second row here. I've got this dark green right here. We're gonna use that for the shadows on the body. Come up here to our brush library then, and we're gonna to switch to the soft rendering brush. And then with this, I'm gonna select that middle size. I think that's what I wanna go for to begin with. Like I said, we've got the uh, light source we're gonna have coming in from this top right-hand corner, so our shadows are gonna fall back in here and on the bottom. So with that done and decided, we're just gonna to start to bring in some shadows here. So I'm gonna to go to that bigger size here. We'll start with that. I'm just gonna slowly build up the shadow here. Bring along that backside and down here underneath. Coming around here and I'm just touching and pressing really lightly on the screen to slowly build this up. And then getting lighter as I come in here towards the body or towards that front side there. All right, now I'm gonna drop the size down to that second one. I'm gonna pull in here tighter so we can see. We'll get here underneath. Thin. This back part here. We'll do the same thing here on the bottom of the mouth and underneath that top lip part. You'll see I went above, but that's okay because we can go ahead and hold down the eraser then and we can just pull that back. I'm gonna pull back a little bit here on the bottom too. I want it to be a little bit heavier underneath that lip. All right. And I'm gonna drop down again to the smaller preset size that I've got on there. Pull in here underneath the eye there, or underneath that bag, underneath this part of the eye, and then up underneath that eyebrow. And kind of pull back and see what we've got there. It's just really kind of a subtle technique I want to slowly build it up and then, of course, using shadows and the highlights together is really going to make it pop and come together. Switch back to the eraser here and I'm going to drop the size so I can come in here and get really tight underneath those lines. Just kind of clean that up. Now, if you get a little bit too hard lined here, you can hold down the smudge. kind of blend that in a little bit so you don't have a hard line. We're not doing the cell shading like I do in a lot of my videos. We're just going for that nice kind of gradient look. All right, staying on this layer, we're gonna do the highlights as well. So we're gonna go to that second color on that line. We'll go with the bigger brush size here and we'll hit along the front here. Getting that pretty bright there. A little bit in here. Continue this down and around here. Same thing here on the top part of this tail coming up. And back in. Then using that smudge tool again, making it a little bit bigger here. I've got this set to around 35, 40%. Just kind of blend that in just a little bit. Moving back to my brush in that middle size then. Pull in a little bit of a, actually I'm gonna go the smaller one. Pull in a little bit of a highlight here. On that eye, or the bag there. And a little bit around here too, and then back to the smudge to kind of work it in. Okay. And I think that looks pretty good for the body itself. So back up to our layers menu then. We're gonna go layer five now. That's the, the fins. We'll make a new layer on top of that. Do the same thing here, tap. Set it as clipping mask. Back to our colors. Third one in on the second row here. And with the bigger brush size. Just 
Gonna come around here. And following the, the flow of the body here, we'll just add in the shadow there along the back. And the same thing here on the bottom side and coming up just a tad bit. Just like that. All right. And let's hit along this too. And we've got the eyebrow too on that. So I'm going to drop the size down and we'll hit a little bit on the eyebrow there. Okay. Back up to our color palette then. Fourth color over. We've got this kind of periwinkle color. I'm going to kind of do some rim lighting here to break this up just a little bit on the fins. this around and this is going to be more instead of the rim lighting the actual highlight here I'm going to drop the size of this then I'm going to pull in some extra here along those lines just make those pop a little bit more just like that and then going back to my smudge tool to kind of work that in back to the brush we need to hit this part of the fin there and then we'll get a little bit here on the top of the brow all right looks good back to our colors here or layers menu we've got the blue next of the drip so we'll make a new layer on top of that one once again Tap it, set it as clipping mask. And then with this, I've got, let's go ahead and just use that darker green that we just used here. I think that'll still work for this with the smaller brush here selected. Let's pull a little bit of shadows here. Underneath, along that backside. just adds a little bit more depth and dimension here to this you can see that blue by itself just looks like really bright and kind of stands out adding in the shadows there really kind of sets that off okay back up to our layers menu and we've got the eye then here layer six new layer tap this one set this as clipping mask again and then back to our colors palette Got this kind of orangish color here. We'll use that and kind of zoom in in here so we can see a little bit better. I'm going to go with that second size. We'll just bring in a shadow here along the top and then along the back side. Just like that. And then back to our color palette and that kind of whitish off-white color. Dropping the size down. We'll pull that around the front here. And then I'm going to go to the smudge just to kind of blend everything in. I'm going to go back to the orange now with that smaller color or smaller brush size selected. I'm just going to build up one more time. All right, I think that looks good. Back up to the layers menu. Finally, layer seven, the iris, new layer on top. Tap it, clipping mask, and then we've got our final color here. I'm just going to pull this around. You can see how that really said add some de depth and some dimension to this now. And then I'm going to go back up and select that off white. We'll hit there in the front. I'm going to make this really small now to, to really get kind of a more structured line here across the front. All right, I'm pulling back out, you can kind of see what we're left with. I think I'm gonna go back in a little bit with that off-white color, that yellowish on layer nine, the highlights for the body here. We'll see what this looks like. Going with that smaller here and maybe add in some more highlights just to make these other ones pop a little bit more. Use 
the smudge tool to pull that out just a tad bit. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good there. I want this to, to not go down too far here because obviously now, since I've already got that down there, I can't go in and, and erase like I did before. It's gonna erase everything. So we'll just add some hints of this in. If we use the smudge tool, we can probably pull a little bit of it out. I think that's good. And then back to the brush, we'll hit just a little bit here along the front. And a little bit around the tail of the tube. All right, and pulling back, you can kind of see what we're left with finally. Just want to come up and make a new layer and sign this guy with my smooth anchor here. All right, and there we go. E for eel. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. I've got a ton more in this series, so definitely stay tuned for those. If you guys do follow along with any of the videos and make a design based on one of the tutorials, I really urge you to share it online. So if you're on Instagram or Twitter, post it there and tag me at BJ Dell so I can check it out. I love seeing your guys' work and what you come up with by following along with my videos. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. As for me, I can also be found online, bjdell.com. And that's it for today's video. One last thing, make sure you hop down in the comments too and leave me suggestions for the rest of the alphabet. We got F through Z coming up. So love to hear what you guys think that you'd like to see for the rest of these letters. So that's it for today. Until next time, keep creating.